Welcome to Open BX Rx Tuesday on BronxNet. I'm your host, Kim Nalene, and I'd like to invite you to get social with us at BronxNet TV on Instagram and Twitter and BronxNet Community Television on Facebook. The issue of gun violence remains a troubling issue for New York, and following recent attacks, many people question the safety of our city. Joining me to discuss gun violence and crimes in the Bronx and the actions needed to address this critical issue is Haley Nolasco, Director of Community-Based Violence Prevention at the Center for Court Innovation. Haley, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Now, can you tell me about your organization, Center for Court Innovation? Yes, of course. So for the past 25 years, the Center for Court Innovation has really created a fairer, um, more effective and more humane justice system. And we've always been operating from a space of innovation. Um, and we've been planning and implementing programs to really test out new ideas, solve problems, and really find ways of achieving systems change. So a lot of our projects have been we have over 36 projects operating at the Center for Court Innovation right now. And a lot of them are really focused on community violence um, based intervention programs, um, to incarceration, entry initiatives, court based programs. Um, and just really working to reduce the gamut of uh, unnecessary incarceration and promote positive individual and family change. So really working on changing the whole dynamic of like around what um, what the system currently is, and really working towards a non carceral approach and being holistic in our practices. And again, being innovative, um, just like our main state states, um, how to create um, safer. Now, you offer several programs, and one of them is the Bronx Community Justice Center, known for their work like Save Our, like the Save Our Streets movement. What is the goal of the BCJC? So really, it's similar to our overall goal, is really creating a safer, more equitable Bronx. So really thinking, of, thinking about what are community-driven safety initiatives that are really based in community, led by community, informed by community, um, using restorative practices to um, repair harm that's being caused um, also increasing youth opportunities, um, really focusing on economic mobility, uh, specifically in the South Bronx, and really making sure that the Bronx is a safe and thriving space. And when we're talking about SOS Bronx in particular, it's a part of the New York City crisis management system, really focusing on using people who are federal messengers who are known in their community to mitigate, de-escalate, and prevent violence from happening. Um, and in, in the moments when violence does happen, really focusing on ensure that retaliations aren't taking place and making sure the community has an opportunity to heal from the harm that's been caused. Um, and again, that it encompasses criminal messengers who are violence interrupters, outreach workers that really know the community and the community really knows values and trust in them to be able to um, make their community safe. Now, in the Bronx and throughout New York City, we've actually seen an increase in gun violence. Um, unfortunately, one case that comes to mind is a 23-year-old who was killed on April 12th while sitting in her car. Why do you think we're seeing such an increase in these violent gun-related crimes? Well, I think it's really important for us when we're talking about an increase in, in violence and in crime that we really focus on what's happened. Um, in the past two years. So pa pa pandemic era spikes in violence have taken place across the country and not just in New York City. And it's really important that we know that um, and call it for what it is. Um, violence was at historic lows before the pandemic with uh, major felonies citywide dropping to about 50% in um, 2019. So the pandemic really brought about a lot of uh, intersecting crisis in public health, education, financial stability, and the uh, access to services and also uh, impacted people's mental health. And when you put all those things together, it really creates um, this it, it, um, initiative that really impacts our public safety, right? Um, so it's really important that we really focus on that um, because we're under resourced and don't have access to things that would usually help to um, keep people busy or, or make sure that people are able to access their much needed resources. Um, there's really a problem that, that, that can exist there. So it's really important that we understand as a state we're going um, and what's affected, um, especially just to tie that piece up where George Floyd's murder uh, also a lot of community trust in government, um, specifically with law enforcement. And a lot of people in our communities, uh, we had researched over 300 young people that are known gun carriers. Um, and they mentioned that they carry guns for safety as well. So it's really important. Now, our borough is still mourning the loss of 16-year-old Angela Yambo, and sadly, we've seen more victims of census gun violence since then. Has getting access to firearms become too easy? Yeah, I would definitely say that um, 
the Bronx, along with the entire city, is definitely mourning the loss of life at the hands of um, senseless gun violence. And in the state of New York, where we have such tough gun laws, access to firearms continues to be accessible um, because of border states with lax gun laws, um, especially with guns coming down the iron pipeline. So I would definitely say that um, the, the, current, the current situation that we're experiencing has a lot to do not just with New York laws, but a lot of our bordering states and um, ensuring that we're able to put policies in place to um, mitigate the access of gun being able to come to our city and the hands of those who should have now, in most of these cases, unfortunately, the victims are innocent bystanders. Do you feel the city is actually doing enough to make New Yorkers feel safe in our city? Well, the city is definitely paying attention um, and has had, um, I want to say that the city right now has the opportunity to really make a great changes and in increasing our public safety. Um, but by taking a really thoughtful approach um, and not only being reactive in response. So I think that the city is listening. We have a, we have a great opportunity right now. And it's important that we're, we're proactive, uh, be able to prevent more exposure of harm to happen to New Yorkers, not just by community violence, but, but also by systemic violence as well. Now, NYPD statistics show that from January 1st until this month, there were 131 ghost guns found in New York City. According to the New York Post, a ghost gun may have been used in the shooting of the three Bronx teens and the murder of Miss Yambo. Could you explain for those who don't know what a ghost gun is and are they a danger to New York City? So ghost guns, in the best way that I'm able to explain it, is a gun that's one easy easy to be made. You can make it in your home, and it's easy to not trace or not know that someone has it. So it, it is it's definitely um, something we should be paying attention to. They're unregulated, um, and it's something that we should be focusing a lot on. If somebody's able to make a gun in their home, it does definitely create a, a public safety so NYC also had a very frightening experiencing experience with the shooting on a Brooklyn MTA train station. In response, Mayor Eric Adams says this is not only a New York City problem. This is violence. These guns, this relentless shootings are an American problem. Mayor Adams goes on to say it's going to take all levels of government to solve it. Do you agree with this and why or why not? I totally agree that it's going to take all levels of gun violence to work together. But again, to create tangible and well thought out solutions that aren't only based in crisis um, and that don't create more harm to black and brown communities and that are equitable and, and include community voice. Because this isn't only an issue that's affecting our transit system. So we shouldn't be designing public safety policy around isolated communities. So um, it's definitely going to take a coordinated effort. Um, and we are hoping that that continues to include community residents um, to be able to design what that is. Now, following the attacks, Mayor Adams says his administration is looking into metal detector technology that could be placed inside subway stations. Do you think this is a good solution? Well, I have to say no. Um, I'm sorry. I, I definitely would have to say no here. Um, I do not believe that this is a good solution. And in practice, I think it's a waste of taxpayer dollars. Um, I really believe that this this would create a deterrent for um, people to even the subway system, just already struggling with getting borders on right? Um, transportation in our city should be safe, easily accessible, and we shouldn't be creating additional barriers to transportation for New Yorkers. Um, metal detector technology really wouldn't assuage the, uh, the issue of why people are using guns in the first place or even wanting to access guns. Again, we need to really focus on, I understand the need to want to be, um, uh, to work with things in place to ensure our safety, but we can't do that without making sure that we're, that we're focused on the cause issues of gun violence. Now, when it comes to upgrades for the MTA, um, stations in low-income areas usually see these upgrades last. If they were to put out metal detectors, would the city benefit from implementing these changes in low-income or high-risk areas first? Well, again, I would definitely say I'm still not uh, in, in agreement with the metal detectors, but if we were upgrading, uh, if we were upgrading transit systems, we're upgrading whenever we want to upgrade to a community in general. I totally believe that um, improving neighborhood infrastructure will always in, 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 uh, improve quality of life for residents. And we know that um, it's always been good for public safety when people feel valued and seen and, and can and really um, see the light and life of a vibrant neighborhood, then we know that people will um, people will come from a space that uh, they're, they're included in what their community is. So um, taking uh, sorry, taking elements from like placekeeping, placemaking, um, crime prevention through environmental design, 
where we're incorporating elements that uh, previously were able to as lighting, um, murals, painting, gardens, anything that makes people feel like they're seen, valued, and have a say in what their communities look like will always have a great impact on what you see. So we have about two minutes left. Can you tell me more about the efforts of the SOS program? Yes, of course. So to what I mentioned before, SOS is, an, uh, is a program that's a part of the New York City crisis management system working throughout the Bronx, but also in Brooklyn, uh, working with credible messengers uh, to really work on making your community safer. Um, these are individuals that go out, um, that are courageous. They don't go out with any like bulletproof vests or any weapons of any kind. They just have a heart of gold and their, their commitment to community and people that trust them to be able to keep them safe. So I would definitely encourage you all to learn more about SOS and their programs and also learn more about the different programs that we have across the center. Um, I think one good program to also think about is the RISE project that's looking at the intersections of gun violence and intimate partner violence. And also even looking at a lot of the work that we have going on in Brownsville and Brooklyn around um, place, place keeping um, and just uh, entrepreneurship opportunities and, and um, uh, and entrepreneur, entrepreneurial investments for young people. Um, definitely encourage you all to follow us, learn more, get involved. We're always looking for volunteers. If you are somebody yourself that feels that you can play a role in public safety, I would definitely um, encourage you all to, to come and join us and, and be a part of the movement. All right. Haley, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Very important conversation. We'll be right back with more Open BXR Tuesday. <laughs> 